Joshua chapter 9, when all the kings who were beyond the Jordan in the hill country and in the lowland and on all the shore of the great sea in front of Lebanon, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite heard of it. They gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord. But when the inhabitants of Jaban heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and to Ai, they also resorted to a ruse and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old sacks on their donkeys and old torn up and bound up wineskins and old and patched sandals on their feet and wore old garments. All the bread of their food supply was dry and moldy. They went to Joshua at the camp at Gilgal and said to him and to the men of Israel, We have come from a far country. Now therefore make a covenant with us. The men of Israel said to the Hivites, What if you live among us? How could we make a covenant with you? They said to Joshua, We are your servants. Joshua said to them, Who are you? Where do you come from? He said to him, Your servants have come from a very far country because of the name of Yahweh your God, for we have heard of his fame, all that he did in Egypt, and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, to Sihan king of Heshbon, and to Ar king of Bashan, who was at Ashtaroth. Our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spoke to us, saying, Take supplies in your hand for the journey, and go to meet them. Tell them, We are your servants. Now make a covenant with us. This our bread we took hot for our supplies out of our houses on the day we went out to go to you. But now, behold, it is dry and has become moldy. These wine skins which we filled were new, and behold, they are torn. These our garments and our sandals have become old because of the very long journey. The men sampled their provisions and didn't ask counsel from Yahweh's mouth. Joshua made peace with them and made a covenant with them to let them live. The princes of the congregation swore to them. At the end of three days after they had made a covenant with them, they heard that they were their neighbors and that they lived among them. The children of Israel traveled and came to their cities on the third day. Now their cities were Jaiban, Chephor, Beeroth, and kiriath Jerem. The children of Israel didn't strike them, because the princes of the congregation had sworn to them by Yahweh, the God of Israel. All the congregation murmured against the princes. But all the princes said to all the congregation, We have sworn to them by Yahweh, the God of Israel. Now therefore we may not touch them. We will do this to them, and let them lie, lest wrath be on us, because of the oath which we swore to them. The princes said to them, Let them lie. So they became woodcutters and drawers of water for all the congregation, as the princes had spoken to them. Joshua called for them, and he spoke to them, saying, Why have you deceived us, saying, We are very far from you, when you live among us. Now therefore you are cursed, and some of you will never fail to be slaves, both woodcutters and drawers of water for the house of my God. They answered Joshua and said, Because your servants were certainly told how Yahweh your God commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land, and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land from before you, Therefore we were very afraid for our lives because of you, and have done this thing. Now, behold, we are in your hand. Do to us as it seems good and right to you to do. He did so to them, and delivered them out of the hand of the children of Israel, so that they didn't kill them. That day Joshua made them woodcutters and drawers of water for the congregation and for Yahweh's altar to this day, in the place which he should choose. Joshua chapter 10 Now when Adoni Zedek king of Jerusalem heard how Joshua had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it, as he had done to Jericho and her king, so he had done to Ai and her king, and how the inhabitants of Jaiban had made peace with Israel and were among them. They were very afraid, because Jaiban was a great city as one of the royal cities, and because it was greater than Ai, and all its men were mighty. Therefore Adoni Zedek king of Jerusalem sent to Hohan king of Hebron, Param king of Jarmuth, Japhia king of Lachish, and Deber king of Eglon, saying, Come up to me and help me. Let's strike Jaiban, for they have made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. Therefore the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon gathered themselves together and went up, they and all their armies, and encamped against Jaiban, and made war against it. The men of Jaiban sent to Joshua at the camp at Gilgal, saying, Don't abandon your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us. Help us, for all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the hill country have gathered together against us. So Joshua went up from Gilgal, he and the whole army with him, including all the mighty men of valor. Yahweh said to Joshua, Don't fear them, for I have delivered them into your hands. Not a man of them will stand before you. Joshua therefore came to them suddenly. He marched from Gilgal all night. Yahweh confused them before Israel. He killed them with a great slaughter at Jaiban, and chased them by the way of the ascent of Beth Horon, and struck them to Azka and to Makeda. As they fled from before Israel, while they were at the descent of Beth Horon, Yahweh hurled down great stones from the sky on them to Azka, and they died. There were more who died from the hailstones than those whom the children of Israel killed with the sword. Then Joshua spoke to Yahweh in the day when Yahweh delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. He said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand still on Jaiban. You, moon, stop in the valley of Ajalon. 
The sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the nation had avenged themselves of their enemies. Isn't this written in the book of Jashar? The sun stayed in the middle of the sky, and didn't hurry to go down about a whole day. There was no day like that before it or after it, that Yahweh listened to the voice of a man, for Yahweh fought for Israel. Joshua returned, and all Israel with him, to the camp to Gilgal. These five kings fled, and hid themselves in the cave of Makeda. Joshua was told, saying, The five kings have been found, hidden in the cave of Makeda. Joshua said, Roll large stones to cover the cave's entrance, and send men by it to guard them. But don't stay there. Pursue your enemies, and attack them from the rear. Don't allow them to enter into their cities, for Yahweh your God has delivered them into your hand. When Joshua and the children of Israel had finished killing them with a very great slaughter until they were consumed, and the remnant which remained of them had entered into the fortified cities, all the people returned to the camp to Joshua and Makeda in peace, and moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. Then Joshua said, Open the cave entrance, and bring those five kings out of the cave to me. They did so, and brought those five kings out of the cave to him, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon. When they brought those kings out to Joshua, Joshua called for all the men of Israel, and said to the chiefs of the men of war who went with him, Come near, put your feet on the necks of these kings. They came near, and put their feet on their necks. Joshua said to them, Don't be afraid, nor be dismayed. Be strong and courageous, for Yahweh will do this to all your enemies against whom you fight. Afterward Joshua struck them, put them to death, and hanged them on five trees. They were hanging on the trees until the evening. At the time of the going down of the sun, Joshua commanded, and they took them down off the trees, and threw them into the cave in which they had hidden themselves, and laid great stones on the mouth of the cave, which remain to this very day. Joshua took Makeda on that day, and struck it with the edge of the sword, with its king. He utterly destroyed it and all the souls who were in it. He left no one remaining. He did to the king of Makeda as he had done to the king of Jericho. Joshua passed from Makeda and all Israel with him to Libna, and fought against Libna. Yahweh delivered it also, with its king, into the hand of Israel. He struck it with the edge of the sword, and all the souls who were in it. He left no one remaining in it. He did to its king as he had done to the king of Jericho. Joshua passed from Libna and all Israel with him to Lachish and encamped against it and fought against it. Yahweh delivered Lachish into the hand of Israel. He took it on the second day and struck it with the edge of the sword with all the souls who were in it according to all that he had done to Libna. Then Horam king of Jezer came up to help Lachish and Joshua struck him and his people until he had left him no one remaining. Joshua passed from Lachish and all Israel with him to Eglon and they encamped against it and fought against it. They took it on that day and struck it with the edge of the sword. He utterly destroyed all the souls who were in it that day according to all that he had done to Lachish. Joshua went up from Eglon and all Israel with him to Hebron and they fought against it. They took it and struck it with the edge of the sword with its king and all its cities and all the souls who were in it. He left no one remaining according to all that he had done to Eglon, but he utterly destroyed it and all the souls who were in it. Joshua returned and all Israel with him to Debir and fought against it. He took it with its king and all its cities. He struck them with the edge of the sword and utterly destroyed all the souls who were in it. He left no one remaining, as he had done to Hebron, so he did to Debir, and to its king, as he had done also to Libna, and to its king. So Joshua struck all the land, the hill country, the south, the lowland, the slopes, and all their kings. He left no one remaining, but he utterly destroyed all that breathed, as Yahweh, the God of Israel, commanded. Joshua struck them from Kadesh Barnea even to Gaza, and all the country of Goshen, even to Jabon. Joshua took all these kings and their land at one time, because Yahweh, the God of Israel, fought for Israel. Joshua returned, and all Israel with him, to the camp to Gilgal.